and it'll shake those people out who tried to pick the bottom and then it, and then it could put in a bottom over here and go higher for a bit yeah. before rolling mm -hmm. over so it's going to be a wild ride and that's why hello everyone chris vermoulin shares his market outlook subscribe now hit that bell icon and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. So as we begin this month of August, we don't know what's coming next. Maybe that's over, maybe it's not. But in your mind, just looking at the data, uh, you have a thing you call best asset now. What right now is the best asset? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's one of the most boring assets that uh, a lot of people don't see it as a position or as a trade or anything like that, but uh, it is one of the most powerful positions you can be in when there is no clear direction in the market. And that's BIL. This is literally like sitting in a cash position. It's holding a one to three month T-bill. There's no downside risk. You just earn daily interest. It keeps going up. It's a weird looking chart because every day you hold it, uh, you're, you're getting daily interest paid out. But if you hold yep. it past the end of the month, all of that interest gets paid out with this purple value in the bottom, which is a dividend payment, which is also paid out or taxed at a lower tax bracket. So, you know, when, when there is no clear direction, the market, the long-term trend is still up in the markets. The short-term trend is still down. We have very mixed signals and we've got crazy money flows. We got Japan doing stuff. We got technology falling out of bed, pretty much everything falling and, and crashing. So when things don't make sense, you can just step on the sidelines collect interest. And while the markets have been falling for the past two weeks, we've been sitting in BIL, just watching the markets go down and watching our account keep going up. And uh, it is a pretty dull, boring position when you look at it. It's just the same thing month after month, uh, but it sure beats holding something like the NASDAQ that has completely collapsed and, and sold off. Um, and same with the SP 500 and, and pretty much everything else actually uh, in terms of um, what's been going down. So uh, when we look at these markets, uh, especially the SP 500, uh, there is no clear direction. We got a lot of volatility, huge gaps to the downside, uh, big rallies and pops and drops happening right now. Massive volume, as as you saw, Craig. By the last couple of days, we saw the VIX up 176 percent in pre market um, yesterday morning, or, or not yesterday morning, but I guess it was on uh, uh, August 5th or 4th. There, huge spike up. Uh, and that is like a indicative of a washout low, a short-term oversold condition. Uh, we saw volume flows on the New York Stock Exchange spike over 67, um, which is a ratio that I follow. So there's 67 shares hitting the bid, people just hitting the market order, get me out, get me out, to every one person buying on the ask. Mm -hmm. And that ratio is 63, to put it in perspective, anything over three is panic. So 63, which doesn't happen very often, very rare, is definitely a level that people were running for the fences. And um, usually that's the sign. Usually a market bottom gets put in when there's big panic like that. Well, like you said, there's nothing wrong with being in cash from time to time. It's a good reminder for people that that isn't always an option. And the math is the math, man. You go down 20%, you got to go back up 25. Yeah. Just to get back to where you started. So uh, there's nothing wrong with being defensive from time to time. Mm -hmm. You know, I refer everybody back to our precious metals projection of last month in the month of July. You can find that right on the Sprott homepage, Sprott Money homepage. Because uh, you mentioned something that caught my ear back then, and that was this kind of, I don't want to call it divergence, but a move away from the big cap, the MAG-7, all of a sudden the Russell 2000 was looking better at the beginning of July. And you said, you know, that's not necessarily a good sign. Yeah. Now, here we are. Can you follow up on that? Yeah, so you and I were talking, I think uh, it was summer, just right in these these couple of days, right where it popped right up here. Right. And what's interesting is we saw the yep. Russell 2000 flatlining and uh, and suddenly money started to flow. We had huge sell-offs in the SP500, the NASDAQ, because of money flowing out of the Magnificent Seven. People were then suddenly going, okay, well, if those are topping, I want to move to the next aggressive kind of growth type of stocks, which are generally seen as the Russell 2000, small cap stocks. And everybody piled into the Russell 2000. And what's really interesting, and you and I talk, talked about this um, last month, which was we saw this happen back in 2021. We saw yeah. the Russell 2000 put in this topping phase. And then suddenly everybody, for some reason, 
got all bullish and they piled into the Russell 2000, which was very short lived. And then we went into a year long bear market phase and the market sold off significantly. And so we've seen that again, right where we are right now, that same scenario. And what's really interesting is if we were to just go way back in time back to 2008, you can see similar type of price action in terms of with the Russell 2000 traded sideways, just like what it's doing right now. And then suddenly it had a big pop and everybody kind of moved into, into small caps for, uh, for some big flush out session. And then suddenly we went into that bear market phase. So this is just telling us that people are, were becoming very bullish and they were simply rotating out of the large caps and saying, okay, well, I think there might be done. I'm going to move to another pocket in the, in the stock market that has potential. So it's kind of interesting how we're seeing the, this, this play play out. And, and what really coupled this, and it happened between you, our last talk, uh, Craig, and right now is the uh, utility market. So if I was to uh, show you the divergence here, let me just throw in the SPY. If we look at the SPY, and look at the, uh, uh, yeah, SPY and utilities, and we just zoom into this price action. This is where there's this huge yeah. divergence where the we saw utilities rally about 6% and change from the time the stock market topped and, and sold down, it moved down dramatically. It was about a 10 or 12% spread. And when the stock market is falling and utilities have a huge rally, 6%, Six seven percent in utilities in that short period is a very quick rally. When we have this divergence, we tend to see the stock market fall off a cliff, and we ended up uh, seeing that back uh, back over here in 2021. We saw uh, utilities do exceptionally well just before the big crash. They outperformed the stock market. The stock market pretty much flatlined for almost a month while well, utilities just kept ripping higher and higher. We had this similar percentage divergence and then we went into a big crash. So the fact that everybody piled into the Russell 2000, we see divergence on uh, utilities and the, the equities market. And on top of that, gold was hitting new all-time highs like just like four or five days ago, uh, uh, beginning of, of August here. So all those things are telling us there's you know, trouble to be had. And then of course the market fell out of bed with Japan and on all that stuff and a huge, huge drop in, in equities across the board and most assets really. If we go back down later this week and make lower lows mm -hmm. versus Monday, uh, what happens then? Now it doesn't necessarily have to happen. That's for sure. It's um, a high probability though. <laughs> well, yeah. And then they're like, oh God, I bought the dip and, you know, and out they go. And that obviously has then impacts on a safe haven trade, maybe the bond market catches a bid, maybe the dollar catches a bid, that all trickles down to what the algos do with gold futures. So we wanna keep a focus here on the equity market since we're in such a volatile period. What levels, uh, be it the triple Q as you have there, uh, the you know, NASDAQ, um, S&P 500, SPY, what are some levels you think people should watch as we get later in this week and early next? Yeah, so we have, we have a couple of interesting things playing out. So because the stock market is really being driven by the Magnificent Seven, which the QQQ is fully loaded with, uh, you, I've been looking kind of at the QQQ. So a couple of days ago, as the market was set to have this huge gap open, I was telling subscribers before the opening bell, I said, listen, the NASDAQ has finally, you know, the previous session we talked about the NASDAQ still has more downside. It still has uh, about a 5% or so downside move. And using Fibonacci extension, which is how we got that target, uh, we are, I was saying, okay, I think the stock market will bottom when the NASDAQ hits this 100% measured move. And what's really interesting, and, and I was talking about that just the day before, and uh, the market has a great way of finding a way to create a bridge and gap to that level so you can't take advantage of the drop. Yeah. And yeah. then it opened right at that measured move. And I was telling everybody in pre-market, I'm like, okay, this is a massive gap down. The VIX is through the roof. There's panic selling. It's blood in the streets. People are buying put options left, right, and center, betting on lower pricing. The NASDAQ is actually going to open at its 100% measured move. And it's a gap, gaps get filled. We're probably gonna see this rip higher and fill that gap. And more or less as of today, since you and I are talking, it actually, it's hard to see, but we've come right back up to this, this lower wick. We've actually filled this yep. giant gap now with these two days. So it was actually a very kind of predictable type of, 
of move. Most people got slaughtered and got out at the bottom and went short. And of course, we were looking the opposite, saying this is like the ultimate like day trade setup or just a reactionary bounce of an extreme situation. Uh, and so we had everything kind of come together for that. Now, on another thing, another scenario, this is a bit different type of analysis. Based on cycle analysis, uh, multiple cycles, we have multiple cycles starting to come down, uh, form a major cycle low. Very similar, almost identical to this one and almost identical to this one. So it's going to be very interesting. This sell-off, though, is definitely more news-driven. It's more violent than these. These were more so just a market correction. These are like more, this more of a crash. So there's been damage done in the last um, over the last month here. But as you mentioned, I think the VIX might have peaked out. But just because the VIX has peaked out doesn't mean the stock market can't go down and push some more lows. I think there's a lot of people bottom picking, expecting this to go higher. But the feel and the underlying technicals, when we actually look at weekly charts on my weekly analysis uh, or, or strategy, everything is, act is actually breaking down. The stock market trend is, is more or less broken behind the scenes. The, the long-term trend hasn't broken down yet, but it's showing that we could come down, as you mentioned, and see lower lows, and it'll shake those people out who tried to pick the bottom. And then it, and then it could put in a bottom over here and go higher for a bit yeah. before rolling yeah. over. So it's going to be a wild ride. And that's why when you get into this type of price action, for some reason, it lures people in. They want to trade in versus ETFs. They want to buy put options. They want to get involved with these huge swings. Um, the best thing to do, believe it or not, is to like step away and let this shake itself out because every day swing is kind of a 50-50 bet here and it's going to be big. So you either nail it or you get hammered with it. It's not worth it. It's a, it's a real gamble, right? Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Chris Vermoulin. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.